Mayor, thank you so much for having me here today. This is a, a, a neat opportunity for me, and I'm uh, bound to say something that's going to make Jim's head explode off of his shoulders before <laughs> I'm done, probably. We got to uh, today through kind of a different route. As our business has grown up, I've found myself with the opportunity to speak to groups, and i got to tell you, the last group I spoke with was at Savannah Technical College. Third graders is really my wheelhouse. That's the group that I enjoy speaking to. But I'm trying to expand that. So I was at Savannah Technical College and I asked the group, this were uh, graduating seniors this year, uh, how many people in this room are gonna have their diploma in the next few months? A, a, a diploma from high school. Every, every hand went up. I said, now who here is gonna have a GED from high school? And mine was the only hand raised. I was 15 hours short of my high school graduation. I said, now, who here uh, runs a million dollar business? And I was the only hand raised again. So I said, now, what's the difference between y'all and me? And I happened to look, and uh, there was a kid on about the third row, and just about the time my eyes met him, he said, you're old. <laughs> I love third graders. <laughs> But of course the answer to that is that they are better educated than me. There is no difference. So what I'm going to share here today with y'all is the story of how our business got started and a few highlights that have, that have helped us. Um, when we started our business, uh, I, was, I was on a break from Valdosta State University. I was at Yellowstone National Park working at the Old Faithful Inn. It was a, a great opportunity for me. I spent the summer living in Yellowstone, I'd work five days, I'd get to hike for five, for two days, and they clothed me, fed me, housed me. Mr. Sidney, it's so good to see you, brother, I love you. So many people in this room I have had the pleasure to serve uh, in the last 20 years, and it is so great to see y'all. We love to, to serve the people, it is so good to see you. It was a kitchen that in three months time served two million people. I just got my, it's the first time I've received my social security uh, information. I've worked long enough now to where they tell me uh, where I am in my life. <laughs> and my first job was in 1984, and if I continue to work at this track until I'm 70 years old, I will have $1,800 a month. <laughs> I'm not a bragger, but I thought I'd share that with you. <laughs> so it, it, it was a, a big operation. My first job, I was in charge of cheeseburgers in the trash. And at Yellowstone, uh, it was a high volume, big run business. And at the end of my three months, Mama called and said, I'm going to start a business. We just, just moved to Savannah. Um, Mama said, all I know how to do is cook. She got a job with Kelly Temporary Services, and she'd been working at Memorial Hospital for, for a time, and said, I'm going to do my own thing. She'd seen the story of a woman in Washington, D.C. That, that had two employees that served back lunches to a traditional uh, businesses that have a hard time getting out for lunch, doctor's offices, beauty parlors. <coughs> And she said, I can do this, I can cook. So the first key to business is ignorance is bliss. <laughs> because if we'd have known any better, we'd have walked uh, out the door that first day. That's not really number one, but it sure helped us. So we, we operated illegally out of our home. Sorry. There's a lot of, a lot of city officials here. <laughs> we'll visit you later. <laughs> well, we, the, eventually, they found us. <laughs> but, but we lived on 60th Street and we serviced uh, the medical arts community. Uh, my brother and I would go out every day and uh, basically beg people to buy lunch from us. The, the, I ride by it all the time. The very first door uh, that I ever knocked on, uh, how I felt walking under that door, I, I can't tell you. It was, uh, I mean, we kind of run out of options. So I said, y'all want lunch? And they looked at me like I had an eye right here. <laughs> I didn't have any uniform, we didn't have any business license, we didn't have a business plan. We had no business <laughs> to be doing business. Really. <laughs> but the, the, I got home and I said, Mom, it's been a, it's a hard first day. I didn't have any sales. And this is, the, this is the real first lesson for new businesses. For you, honey, with a head above, be consistent. Mama said, well, you're going to go to that same door at the same time tomorrow. And after a few days, we warmed down. And somebody said, let me have the chicken salad. <laughs> <laughs> so 
And then once people got into the food, they said, whoa, I mean, this is, this is, this is all handmade by my mom, fresh from the house, up a block away from this address. Everything was $2 to $5. Our high-end item was $5. My dad on Friday morning would wake up about 4 o'clock, put chickens on the grill, and we'd pick the chickens and put them on a salad with a homemade honey mustard and tomatoes. That was a grilled chicken salad. That was high dollar. It was $5 for that salad. So we found some footing, and, and throughout that year we, we did our business, and there was a, a business here in town that was kind of doing the same thing, and we got into his pockets a little bit. So it wasn't long before a, a dedicated... Uh, city employee knocked on our door and <laughs> said, uh, Miss Ding, you're not running a business out of this house, are you? And Mom said, well, no, that would be illegal. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it was just after that, and as big as a challenge uh, as it was operating, I mean, I was 21 years old, and I felt like I knew everything. And what's funny is that I'm a few years older today than my mama was when she started our business. There's 20 years difference between my mom and I. And uh, I, I just, it's incredible what she was able to do. Now, I would have jumped out the window, but we were on a single level. <laughs> and mom just would have drugged me back in the house. Uh, we weren't getting paid. Uh, we, we didn't have uh, any kind of plan. There was, there was uh, if we didn't sell on Monday, we couldn't operate on Tuesday. So we were under the gun. I thought that was hard. And then we went into the Best Western Motel at 45 South Eisenhower on the south side. We, uh, we, it was a turnkey operation. We didn't have any capital, but we had, uh, they had, had every glass and plate uh, for everything that we needed to go in. So we operated, the name of our business was The Bag Lady. As if all those things in the house weren't bad enough, my delivery vehicle was an old U.S. postal truck whose primary colors was watermelon and lime green, a, a, a pink and watermelon green. And Mama used to think it was funny for us to dress up and deliver on Halloween. So I dressed up as a bag lady a couple of times on Halloween. <laughs> when we moved into uh, the Best Western, uh, there's not a lot of people that are really searching uh, for a good meal at a, at a motel. So it was the bag lady that kept us in business for those, those first few years. We, I would go in, on, or I'll never forget that, that we got into a stretch where I went in one, I was flip-flopping my schedule trying to figure out the best way to, to do the food and I decided that I would prepare food from midnight till about six and we'd go out for deliveries. There was one time I went in, probably 11 o'clock, we prepared food all night. We got busy that morning and then stayed busy through lunch and somehow I'd I'd stayed there until it was time for me to come back to work for the next day. So I'd work like 36 hours before I could get out of there. And I was making uh, 75, 80 cents an hour at that point. So we would do, mom wanted to do fine dining in the evenings. So we'd do bag lady in the, in the morning and we'd have breakfast. We didn't do a whole lot of breakfast business. There was some built in uh, from the hotel. We didn't do any lunch. And mama would put me in a tuxedo shirt with a bow tie and black pants, and I'd stand in that dining room just like this all night, waiting on people to come in. And after we were there for three years, we said, you know, we should do what Granny Paul's done, the food that everybody here has eaten all your life, but you usually have to wait till Sunday to get it. We're gonna do Sunday dinner on Wednesday. We're gonna call it the Hump Day Buffet. And it's gonna be what my Granny Paul made. It's gonna be fried chicken and macaroni and cheese, and collard greens and hoe cakes and good biscuits and black eyed peas. Food. Southern food. Our food. Our family's food. And it went along where we had a line going out of the door of the Best Western on Wednesdays. We sat down and said, well now let's see about this now. Maybe we could do it on Tuesday and Monday and Thursday and Friday. So we incorporated the buffet throughout the week. And we found some some good good seating there. So uh, another good lesson is never give up. Mom will tell you don't ever give up. Don't let anybody tell you what you can or can't do. We went to, uh, we had an opportunity to move our business downtown to 311 West Congress Street. It was a big move for us. This was at a time where a business on the south side moving downtown garnered front page coverage. 
We've got it framed in our restaurant today. Southside business is moving back downtown. When we first moved here, when my, my father moved here, Fine's department store was the last big exodus from downtown going south. And our whole time we were on the south side, we never came downtown. But we we, were, we just needed our own place. I, we'd done everything we could do at a Best Western. And we're grateful for the opportunity and made great friends there. And a lot of the customers we served there, we still see, I see here right now. But when we had the chance to move downtown, we needed some help. So we went to the to the SBAC, my friend Stephen George sitting right over there. And the first time we asked for a loan, we were turned down. So another lesson, do not be too proud to beg. <laughs> we said, please. <laughs> Worked out pretty good, didn't it, Steve? <laughs> In 1995, Stephen George and Tony O'Reilly authorized a loan for our business for $125,000, and we were able to move downtown to 311 West Congress Street. Mayor, come up, past president, past, past president, past mayor came out. We cut the ribbon, uh, get, got the newspaper again. We were overdrawn in two accounts: our working account and our business account. We were completely upside down. At the 11th hour, my mom took me by the hand and walked me down the street to First Union, and I signed a note for $5,000 to get us open. So I, I had a lot of sweat equity in the game. That was my first skin that I threw in. <laughs> on, the, on the hook for five grand, and I don't even think I'd ever seen $5,000 at that point. <laughs> but you in for a penny, you in for a pound. Doug McCoy uh, helped us out with our loan there at First Union. And uh, we got open, and there were 60 or 70 people there that first day. We'd been closed down for eight or nine months during the renovation process, and those people had stuck with us. The day that we opened, all of our Southside friends came, and Mama stood inside the front door and just cried like a baby. And that was a proud day for us uh, to finally get open. And that was the point of our business where I felt like, I'm, you know what, maybe I'm stupid. Maybe Mom's smart. It, it took me until I was 30 years old to figure out that I need to spend more time pulling instead of pushing. Because I wish I could tell you that I was, uh, you know, excited to be living at the house with my mama and <laughs> working for my mama, <laughs> driving a pink mail truck for my mama. <laughs> but it was hard for me. But when we got downtown and we got to know our neighbors, uh, we moved right in between uh, Garibaldi's. Gerald the Chef there's a great friend of mine, it's a great business, and uh, Bistro Savannah. And I felt like, wow, we're part of a, a community now, a neighborhood. This is our business. Uh, that, we've, 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 that was our first big step. And, but you can't make a living serving 60 people a day. So we were, what do we do now? And we did what we always did. We kept our head down. And we wanted just to do the best food with the best service at a fair price that we could do. That's what had gotten us to that point. So we'd worked through and worked through, and my mom had collected recipes for her whole life on the back of envelopes and uh, just catch as catch can. And she formulated all those. She worked on it for almost five years. You have to, doing a cookbook's a lot harder than you think, especially if you self publish it, like our first book. Mom had to test every single recipe. So after five years, Mom had put this together, and we walked down half a block to Pressworks, another local small business right there on Congress Street for us. And the big decision for us then was, how many should we have printed? We saw 5,000. You get a nice price break on 5,000 books. If we didn't think we'd be selling 5,000 books, that we felt like, well, at least we'll have Christmas gifts for all of our family. <laughs> no matter how big our families are, everybody will always get a cookbook. So, Another lesson is sometimes you got to go out on the limb to get the fruit. If you don't try, you might never know. So we got 5,000 books. Shortly after that, uh, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil filmed here in Savannah, which uh, the film, uh, I was so glad to hear the news about our, our film in the last couple of weeks and, and how we're going to keep that tradition alive here. It means so much to our, our local economy and, and national how people think about us. 
But when this film came here and started filming downtown, it was a really big deal for us. We had Clint Eastwood in the restaurant. Uh, Kevin Spacey was here. It was so exciting to see Hollywood big time production right there in our little neighborhood. It was such an exciting time for us. Random House published that book. John Barron uh, here in town who'd been in and out of our restaurant from when we were on the south side um, just did a tremendous job on that book. It was on the bestseller list forever and a day. And Random House had a representative here in town uh, who was overseeing the film and, and it started raining one day and Pamela Cannon dug into our our restaurant just to get out of the rain and she happened to see uh, our cookbook on display there inside the front door. Now another thing that we've done is that you got to be lucky but in a lots of times you can make your own luck <coughs> but that was a lucky day for us. Uh, Pamela popped in, popped right back out, had gone to New York and called us a few days later and said I noticed that y'all have a book uh, for sale and I'd love to have to take a look at it. Would you please mail two of your books up to, to me here in New York? And I said, yes, ma'am. And she said, Random House. And I said, oh, who? <laughs> Took the information down and told mom. I said, mom, Random House just called. They want two of our books. Mom said, what's a Random House? <laughs> I said, well, it's not a Random House. <laughs> and it's one of the biggest publishing companies in New York City. And do you have any idea how many people call them every day and say, well, can I please mail you one of my books, please? And they called us and wanted to see our book. And we mailed it up to them, and uh, a couple weeks later we got a phone call. I can't tell you the whole story. I'll cry like a baby. I'm, I get so emotional about our business. <clears throat> That's one of the greatest days of my life is when I took that call. And uh, I got to share it with my mom. And that really opened up a lot of doors for us. Well, it's not international, but it is uh, nationally, it's is, is, is a great an opportunity as a small business can have for somebody like that to put you out there. And that got us on uh, QVC. My mom had a chance to go up and, and work on QVC. And we had a friend that owned, uh, what was the name of... Uh, there was a, a dog boutique store here. I can't believe I've forgotten her name. It'll come to me. She was a Victoria's Secret model and owned uh, Harry Barker here in town. She got a, this was a, a you talk about baby cashmere suits for $5,000. <laughs> she really sold dog stuff for like <laughs> that same neighborhood. So she wasn't here very long, but <laughs> she was from New York. A great, a great woman, nice as she could be. Her friend, her good friend Gordon Elliott, was working in Charleston, South Carolina, uh, filming a television show for the Food Network. And uh, she said, you've got to come meet my friend Paula Dean. This woman is a hoot. So he came down and we were very excited. We got to meet Gordon. He had his own television show, huge Australian guy, talks just like Robin Leach. Um, he met mommy and said, you'd be a great guest on a television show that I do called Door Knock Dinners. Would you please come out to Las Vegas with me, and y'all know stories about my mama, like Las Vegas, mom was like, mm-hmm, <laughs> he didn't even get finished, but she said, mm-hmm, <laughs> and Bobby and I were able to go, and that's the first time I'd ever rode on a plane, was when we went to Las Vegas, and we went outside uh, into a little suburb and knocked on doors, he would he would knock on doors and he would say, I'm Gordon Elliott, store knock dinners, I'd like to come in and prepare dinner for you using only what you have in your house right now, and we're going to do it on TV. So there were three or four people that, that said, no thank you. And we went to the last door and it was a woman that had two small boys and Gordon had given her the spill and she said, oh, it's getting late, my husband's coming home, I really don't have time to do this. And mama poked her head around Gordon and said, well, hey honey, how are you doing? And this look just like my boys. And they got to talking and the woman said, okay, well you can come in. And Gordon looked at mom and he said, because he's the pro at it. So we went in, cooked dinner, everything was great. Mom made a big spaghetti casserole. She did fried apple pies with canned biscuits they had in the refrigerator. She did a salad. It was a great show. And when we were going back into the city, Bobby and I were sitting in the back seat. And uh, Gordon looked at Mom and said, you're going to be a star. He said, you're going to have your own television show. And I'm, I'm going to produce it. And Bobby and I looked at each other and said, that's reason number 100, not a trusted Yankee. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I love Yankees. 
<laughs> so we went back in town, and uh, I got to tell you, we went to a restaurant. We went to Le Cirque, probably the nicest restaurant I've ever been in. And Gordon took us, and uh, we walked up to the mayor day, and he looked at us and said, you have to have a tie here, sir. Bobby, myself, and Gordon, none of us were wearing ties. And Bobby was wearing a golf shirt. And he pulled out three identical black knit ties from behind his thing, and the three of us stood there and put those ties on. And I looked at my brother with that golf shirt on, put on that tie, and I like to wet my bridges. And the more I laughed, the tighter my brother's dog got. That was an awesome dinner. We had so much fun. So we came home, and it took a couple of years, but uh, we had the opportunity for for mom to to shoot a pilot. And if you I don't think they ever showed the pop, but it was funny. They put mom in a cashmere sweater and pearls in high heels. <laughs> and that's how they shot the pilot. And uh, Gordon saw it and he said, they will never see this because this is not who, who Paul is. And this was shortly after uh, September the 11th in 2001. And the attitude of the whole country had kind of changed where there's just so much fear. and. Everybody was kind of drawn back into their families and, and what's comfortable and safe for everyone. So it was a good time for my mom to be shown. The Food Network said, now's the time. We'll get her out here. We'll talk about what's uh, the most important thing to us here, I know, in the South, and that's family and tradition and, and who we are and, and what we do. And it was a, well, it's been pretty successful for her. During this time, we a piece of property came available at 108 Congress Street, which is a uh, we didn't know why it was available, and we bought it. We had some money; we needed to spend some money, so we bought this one little parcel, a couple of blocks down the street from the restaurant, which is now the waiting area of our restaurant. 102 and 104 came up. And we wound up buying those two pieces, and now we have the Paula Dean Retail Store, which was the bar that we've got. So we've got now four parcels down there, and we bought one not knowing, you know, what we were going to do with it. Uh, Bobby and I had the opportunity to to get into the industry a little bit. We started a, a cookbook. Our fourth book will be out uh, coming up next month. Uh, Y'all have to excuse me. I'm seven and a half months pregnant. I know y'all got it. <laughs> so I haven't been sleeping well. <laughs> My wife is actually, we're having a baby in six weeks. Um, so for us, uh, the most important thing is to remain here and true to ourself. We talked a little bit about brand and for us, it's the smartest thing you can do as a small business person, but it's the most natural thing in the world to us. Because you knew what I was going to say when you asked me to come here today. And people know what my mom is going to do when she's on TV. That's because we are who we are. And, and, and to represent Savannah and give back to this community that's taking care of us is the most important thing. So I'll ask y'all all to support our local food bank, for one. We work really closely with America's Second Harvest, a Savannah Safe Shelter, Bethesda Home for Boys. And keeping our businesses here, we've had the opportunity to, they've been chasing us put a lady and sons in Charleston for a long time. And I promise you, I promise you, Mr. Mayor, there will never ever be another lady and sons restaurant except the one in Savannah, Georgia. Right. This is where this is where our home is. I wasn't born here, I've been here twenty some odd years and this is where they're gonna plant me. <laughs> so we have uh, we do have some partners that we work with. Uh, Harris is a partner of ours and they do a Paula Dean buffet. Now those are outside of town, but there's the only lady and sons is going to be here. I'm distracted. I feel like I should be setting up that buffet by now. <laughs> I'm usually behind that curtain <laughs> instead of on the front side of it. The, uh, the, old, the old media saying is don't compete, don't work with kids or animals. Well, the third one is hungry stomachs. So I know we're running a little bit later in here today. Check my notes, make sure I haven't forgotten anything. Our brand partners are Meyer Corporation, who does pots and pans. Uh, we work with Harris. Uh, we work with Smithfield. We're working with Walmart. They're putting all of our desserts into their bakeries, Walmarts all across the country. So, as our business has grown, uh, I hadn't owned a suit jacket that long. <laughs> 
but I still work really hard, but I don't wash dishes anymore. Uh, we just closed the restaurant down at the end of January, and we were doing some renovation work, and I was in the kitchen with my guys painting the kitchen. So the big key for us really is to work hard. That's what you have to do is work hard. Because nobody's going to call you and say, I want to buy everything you got. <laughs> you, you, have to, you have to work uh, for what you have. And be true to yourself. For us, uh, you know, to sell pots and pans or to have cookbooks or, you know, kind of cheesy t-shirts, that's, you know, that's who we are. We're not going to start selling China. <laughs> you know, it's, we're going to be who we are. So I guess the big question uh, is, is how you can get there to where I am, where I've been so fortunate. The, the number one thing is get yourself born by Paula Dean. <laughs> That's tough, tough to break into, but it works. We, we started with uh, three employees. We had $200, and 20 some odd years later now, we have 350 employees, and we'll generate over $550 million in business this year. Oh try to do next year is figure out how not to spend $549 million doing that business. But you have to be consistent. You have to never give up. Don't let your pride trip you up in your new small business. Stay loyal to your customers and to your city, to the people that help you. I have the same food salesman. This is unheard of. Pat Watkins with PYA came into our business at the Best Western and he met my mom and he saw our business and he said, I'll give you this first week's groceries on credit because we didn't have any money to buy groceries. He's still my food man. And my food, I spend $3 million a year now on food. It worked out pretty well for him too. <laughs> Doug McCoy at First Union crossed the street to SunTrust. I followed him to SunTrust because he gave us that initial seed money to get started. SunTrust is in the board. You have to plan a plan ahead. It was just us buying that business. What if you do succeed? What are you going to do then? Position people within your business to keep your business growing. We already talked about working hard and staying true to yourself. But the only business plan my mom has ever shared with Bobby and I, and it's time to eat, so I'm going to I'm going to leave on this, is the KISS method. It's unbeatable in business. Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> Keep it simple. Stay true to yourself. Take care of the people that take care of you. That's what we do. Thank you all very much for your time this morning.